Hello, my name is Emily Belcastro, and the book that I chose was uh, The Girl Who Loves Wild Horses. This is written by Paul Global. He is a British American author as well as an illustrator. He um, writes books that are primarily based on Native American cultures and Native American like traditional art and just different stories. And this book is a childhood book, which is why it's pretty <laughs> pretty torn up but um I chose this book because this book means a lot to me as well as I believe that the story really correlates to a lot of Native American cultural beliefs in terms of their really rich connection with animals as well as nature and just kind of the the um kind of religion and spirituality around that and I believe that this book really communicates that and illustrates that culture and that belief but in a way that I think young children will be able to grasp. Um, so yeah, without further ado, this is uh, The Girl Who Loved Wild Horses by Paul Global. So, page. I also really love the artwork in this story. The artwork um, really, he did a lot of research prior. I read an article about a lot of research he did, making sure that he was remaining really true and factual to different um, just dressing, the dressing of Native Americans as well as like animals they hunted. So I really appreciate that this author put in genuine research instead of just kind of basing off stereotypes, which I feel like a lot of times media does. So yeah, I appreciated that a lot. And so this is The Girl Who Loved Wild Horses. So, the people were always moving from place to place following the herds of buffalo. They had many horses to carry the tips and all their belongings. They trained the, their fastest horses to hunt the buffalo. There was a girl in the village who loved wild horses. She would often get up at daybreak when the birds were singing about the rising sun. She led the horses to drink at the river. She spoke softly and they followed. People noticed that she understood horses in a special way. She knew which grass they liked best and where to find them shelter from the winter blizzards. If a horse was hurt, she looked after it. Every day, when she helped her mother carry water and collect firewood, she would run off to be with the horses. She stayed with them in the meadows, but was careful never to go beyond the sight of home. One hot day, when the sun was overhead, she felt sleepy. She spread her blanket and lay down. It was nice to hear the horses eating and moving slowly among the flowers. Soon, she fell asleep. A faint rumble of distant thunder did not wake her. Angry clouds began to roll across the sky with lightning flashing in the dark. Nevertheless, she slept, but the fresh breeze and scent of rain made her sleep soundly. Suddenly, there was a flash of lightning, a crash and rumbling which shook the earth. The girl leapt to her feet in fright. Everything was awake. Horses were rearing up their hind legs and snorting in terror. She grabbed a horse's mane and jumped on his back. In an instant, the herd was galloping away like the wind. She called to the horses to stop, but her voice was lost in the thunder. Nothing could stop them. She hugged her horse's neck with her fingers twisted in its mane. She clung on, afraid of falling under the drumming hoofs. The horses galloped faster and faster, pursued by thunder and lightning. They swept like brown flood across the hills and through valleys. Fear drove them on and on leaving their familiar grazing grounds far behind. At last the storm disappeared over the horizon. The tired horses slowed and then stopped and rested. Stars came out and the moon shone over the hills. The girl had never seen before. She knew that they were lost. Next morning she was wakened by a loud neighing. A beautiful spotted stallion was prancing to and fro in front of her, stamping his herbs and shaking his mane. He was strong and proud and more handsome than any horse she had ever dreamed of. He told her he was the leader of the wild horses who roamed the hills. He welcomed her to live with them. She was glad, and all her horses, horses welcomed her to live there. They lifted their heads and neighed joyfully, happy to be free with the wild horses. People searched everywhere for the girl and vanished horses. They were nowhere to be found. But a year later, two hunters rode in the hills where the wild horses lived. 
When they climbed the hill and looked over the top, they saw the wild horses, led by the beautiful spotted stallion. Beside him rode the girl, leading a colt. They called after her. She waved back, but the stallion quickly drove her away with the other horses. The hunters galloped home and told what they had seen. The men mounted their fastest horses and set out at once. It was a long chase. The stallion defended the girl and the colt. He circled round and round them so that the riders could not get to them. They tried to catch him with ropes, but he dodged them. He had no fear. His eyes shone like cold stars. He snorted and his herbs stuck as fast as lightning. The riders admired his courage. They might never have caught the girl except her horse stumbled and she fell. She was glad to see her parents again, and they thought she would be happy to be home again, but they soon saw she was sad and missed the colt and the wild horses. Each evening, as the sun went down, people would hear the stallion neighing sadly for the hilltop above the village, calling for her to come back. The days passed and her parents knew the girl was lonely. She became ill and doctors could do nothing to help her. They asked what would make her well again. I love to run with the wild horses, she answered. They are my relatives. relatives. If you let me go back to them, I shall be happy evermore. Her parents loved her and agreed that she would go back to live with the wild horses. They gave her a beautiful dress and the best horse in the village to ride. They spotted Stally and led his wild horses down from the hills. The people gave them fine things to wear, colorful blankets and decorated saddles. They painted designs on their bodies and tied eagle feathers and ribbons to their manes and tails. In return, the girl gave them a colt to her parents. Everyone was joyful. Once again, the girl rode beside the spotted stallion. They were proud and happy together, but she did not forget her people. Each year she would come back, and she always brought her parents a colt. And then one year she did not return, and was never seen again. But when hunters next saw the wild horses, there galloped beside a mighty stallion. A beautiful mare with a mane and tail flouted like wispy clouds above her. They said the girl had truly become one of the horses at last. Today we are still glad to remember that we have relatives among the horse people, and it gives us joy to see the wild horses running free. Our thoughts fly with them. The end. And then the author also includes right here a Nehefo song about his horse. So the song, he actually contacted a Native American who was, um, who like wrote songs about his culture and his ancestry and asked to like include the song. So I thought that was really cool that though the story is not written by a person of like Native American descent, he still, the author still was able to incorporate that voice in the book, which I think is incredibly important. So yeah, I'll just go over. I think a lot of the meaning behind this book is really illustrating again that connection between Native Americans and animals. And you know, there's even that part in the book where she talks about, you know, these are my relatives. And I think that there's a lot of really strong life and connection there, especially with horses, because horses were a lot of um, you know, like a lot of transportation as well as just that really intense connection. I think for students this also really shows just that, again, that Native American culture being having that, not like all types of culture, but just a segment of it, that being communicated in a way that they can fully understand. This book has a lot of colors and images. I also think the fact that this book, um, a lot of the characters are dressed in like traditional Native American clothing, it also kind of gives some more ideas of culture and um, representation, even if it's not this clear cut verbal expression they're still communicating that through illustrations i think for a activity that i would do with this book i think doing an activity where children are somehow like picking an animal and like forming those connections or doing research about native american culture as well as the animals that were really important to native americans and then picking one of those animals and creating just different um stories or art about that animal and really kind of one fully understanding the Native American culture with nature and that like spirituality there as well as being able to step into that for themselves and kind of understand that feeling and that connection and I think that's a way of connecting that culture in a way that is fun and a lot of peace and just um a really good for children to understand that and be able to experience that 
So yes, this is my the book that I chose and again that is uh, The Girl Who Loved Wild Horses by Paul Global and I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs>